Picking up nothing but static, picking up nothing but static, picking up nothing but static on Channel Z. Yeah. You want to pick up static? Yeah. Get yourself some uh, wool socks. Yeah. And get some uh, glass rods and walk around and on uh, l nylon or something and rub it and rub it. You'll be sh you'll be picking up. No, some. you want to know how to pick up some static? Run across a perfectly flat golf course in a torrential thunderstorm holding up the a two 10 iron. foot steel pole. You know what? No, it has can, to be longer than if, a mere golf No, pole. if you hold a two iron, you can say, God can't even hit a two iron. Because <laughs> a two iron's the hardest club to hit, right? Really? Yes, but, Why is that so hard to hit? Because it's just a flat, I don't want you know what? If I knew that, I'd probably be Tiger Woods. <laughs> really? Speaking of which, what? he tied the record for all-time PGA wins that was held by Sam Snead for about 50 years. No. 82 wins for Tiger Woods. And Sam Snead was the former record holder? And the next guy is Jack Nicklaus, 73. So it's Jack and Tiger at 82. Jack and, and Jill Jack went up the hill? To fetch a pail of water. Okay. What are Anyways, we going so today? We got a big show today. We got lots going on. Interest rates moving up. Interest rates up. S&P record, another record high of the, uh, yeah. actually it's the index of American Industrial Subsidization. There you go. There we go. How much money has been pumped into the U.S. corporate machine? And they're pumping money now, and they're not calling it QE. They're, they got another way to say, oh, we're not doing that. We're, That's right. We're putting money in, but it's different Now it's design. called the repo market. They just said, hey, we've got this repo market over yeah. here where we've got this other confounding thing. Let's just take that, and we'll put it onto QE, and then everybody will think it's just the repo market. Business as usual. So the the, the 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 probability of a rate cut at the next, which I think is this week or next week. Rate cut. They're, 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 it's ninety three percent certain the Fed's going to cut the rate. Ninety three percent based on where the where the Fed is now, and yet we've seen the ten year rate move magically up, like magic. Like how? Why is it going up? I don't well, know. Well, maybe they're trying to normalize the curve. Normalize yeah, the curve. You know, you know, you want the. Longer term rates to be a bit higher than the pre the shorter term. Well, how rates. are they going to do that if the long term if the ten year rate keeps bumping up higher? Well, that's but that okay, but that would normalize it because the Fed rate would be here, the the ten year rate would be up here, oh. and that's what they want. But that would cause maybe that tellations around the corner, which would be good for gold. Well, I, inflation's been here for thirty years, I know, but it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's, it's just a bunch of bullshit. You know, it, games. It's amazing. We even take our time. Um, yeah. First day of trading today for New Wave Esports, yeah. NWES on the CSE, traded over a million shares so far and up. It's funny, my chart says it's up 1,400% uh, because it's trading at 14 cents. So how does it get well, to that they, number? They, you know why? Because they, 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 because this stock's never traded before, they're assuming the previous trade was zero. Yeah, but 1,400% of zero is zero. It, 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 <laughs> More bullshit. <laughs> More bullshit. But I think folks are starting to get the picture. Lots of bullshit out there. We chatted quickly with Daniel Mitria just a little while ago. Here he is. Daniel Mitria joins me now. He's the CEO and founder of New Wave Esports. Dan, welcome back. Hey, thank you very much. It's an exciting morning for us. Yeah, you bet. So you started trading and uh, volume looks good. How are you? Uh, how are you enjoying the day so far? Well, it's been a wild ride getting up to this. Uh, it's been an early morning since you guys are three hours ahead of us. So, <laughs> trading for me starts at six a.m. Right. Uh, but we're extremely excited. You know, this year the the team has worked really hard at building a incredible esports and competitive gaming portfolio, and we're excited to bring this live on the CSC. We're we're traded under the the uh, ticker symbol of NWES. And we also have some warrants out there trading under nwes.wt. Uh, so we're just we're extremely humbled by 
uh, the reception we're seeing so far. And just I'm personally very, very thankful for all the teams and the partners that came together to make this monumental milestone a reality for us. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so uh, let's run through the business model again just briefly. You're uh, basically acquiring uh, positions in other esports companies and uh, basically maturing them to uh, an exit in the future, correct? Yes, uh, so New Wave Esports is set up into two pillars. So what you just uh, described is, is kind of our acquisitions arm. And so we very much come through and we, uh, we pick up companies, we bring in our expertise as, as support services and advisors and help build these companies into something that's flourishing and contributing to the esports industry. Uh, but we also have a holdings arm. And so we, we, we actually invest uh, cash checks into companies to help them grow, whether they're early or mid-stage. Uh, so we're all here. Uh, we're passionate about the esports industry, and we're growing it together with companies that know how to do it well. You bet. The esports industry is kind of new, especially when it comes to capital markets. So, I mean, there's not a lot of opportunities to invest in esports. There's not a lot of different companies. And uh, so I'm curious as to what is, the, what is the rate of growth of the number of companies that are going to be in the space in a year's time, for example, expected to be? I mean, the sky's the limit here. You know, like we're at the ground level of esports here within North America, relatively speaking, you know, compared to the rest of the world. Uh, we see deals, and you know, we see like anywhere from 12 to 20 deals every week or so. So there's a lot of companies that are out there that are looking to uh, contribute to the esports industry. Everything from teams to platforms, events to tools, all sorts of great companies that are very much pushing esports forward. So look, I, I couldn't put a number on how many companies to expect, but I, I will say that you can expect to see much more companies jumping on the bandwagon as we figure out how to be profitable within esports. Sure. What kind of business models are you most attracted to within the esports segment? Well, uh, it really depends on our objective, right? So New Wave Esports uh, has a diversified portfolio. We don't believe in just one type of company or one type of model because it really is an ecosystem push esports forward. So we invest in the ecosystem. We're building that ecosystem for sustainability. But some of the, the most interesting sectors that, that, uh, that come across our plate, uh, certainly teams. Uh, you know, there is a, a lot of hype and buzz around teams. Uh, but those that operate with a content programming nucleus in mind are ones that actually break through the static quite a bit because they have the audience exposure and they're able to build in uh, sponsorship dollars on that and build in great communities uh, that latch on to their messaging. So teams are certainly uh, pushing uh, esports forward, but also the rest of the industry. You, I mean, you've got esports events, you have tournament operators. These all operate within uh, their own nuanced sort of business practices. And then there's platforms and networks in which the rest of the world can connect online from the comfort of their own home, whether it's online tournaments or, or wage betting. There's a lot of different sectors and ways of operating being successful in esports. Mm -hmm. And New Wave uh, certainly invests in those. Sure. And so was there a lot of demand for uh, New Wave as an investment itself? There's, there's always a, a demand coming in, you know, whether it's uh, an investor, retail institution, or, or brokers coming in and wanting to fuel our business. Uh, but now that we're public here, the public can jump in on this uh, and certainly contribute to esports and invest in the esports ecosystem as we see it. You bet. All right, Dan, great update. Congratulations on coming to trade, and we'll be back to you soon. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, James. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. And then I roll up my sleeves okay. and I'll get you my ass back to work like that goddamn Finkelstein shit kid son of a bitch. <laughs> There, that's what happens at my house if you complain about your lot in life. Yeah, you can't, you know. That's what my daddy told me. Complaining 
Remember that song by uh, Cheech and Chong? But Paul was talking to me, he tell me how to live. But I don't listen to him because my head is like a sieve. That was Cheech and Chong. Yeah. I want to come back as Cheech. The wedding album. That was my brother and I used to do that song for all our relatives. Drove them nuts. Made them laugh. But uh, yeah. Yeah. That was a line from that. I'm going to send you off to military school like that shit kid Finkelstein. No, that Finkelstein shit kid son of a bitch. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Okay, maybe it's not so funny. Okay, okay. Um, what else happening today? Well, let's... What, the, How about... Oh, 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 oh. I'll give you a hint. How about Virgin Airways? <gasps> I got Virgin it. Galactic launched today. SPCE is the symbol trading on. Is it NASDAQ? SPC? SPCE. S Only 12 P bucks a share. Kind of makes you want to back up the truck, don't it? Well, you know what? How many shares, though? Well, who? we're not supposed to ask those questions, Ed. Virgin Galactic Holdings. Here we go. Now, here's the funny thing. Look at these okay, devices. So, okay. Look at these things. Now, okay. is every seat a window seat? Because it's 250000 bucks a flight. So, can you imagine getting on that plane and you don't have a window seat? Oh, this is for... Is this for his whole empire? Or is no, this, this just for SPCEs, Virgin Galactic Holdings. Yeah. So this is about flying to the moon, right? Nope. Flying into oh, outer space. space. Not, not flying to the moon. Fly <laughs> me to the moon. Okay. Let me. Anyways, there's a, there I, it is up I there. Wanna, I want to point out here. This thing came out at twelve bucks. Yep. Okay. Yep. Looking at the chart. The high was twelve ninety. Twelve ninety one. Twelve ninety two. Yep. Okay. Got a single candle on our hands. Got a single candle. What pattern you know is what? that? You want to? Want to? I'll show you some. What I'll, kind of a candle is that? Let's refer to Mark Latimer's candle there, pictures. There, there we go. Whoa, man! So that's one day. You see, isn't isn't Trading View great? I like it. I know. We should we should we yeah. should get our show on there. Trading View, we love you. Um, okay. So, so so what does it mean? Well, you know what? What's it all mean? Not enough data. To really make, but you know what? If yeah. we can, we can hold in here, go sideways. Let the riders who got in or, you know, on the new issue, they're not there for a long time. They were hoping it would jump to a premium. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, they're going to come out after a few days of this. If it, it can hold near the issue, like let's say twelve bucks less, whatever the commissions are, yeah. should if you you know take out the commissions because yeah. that that that's. Yeah. Money gone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like if, it, if it's if it's eleven fifty, eleven seventy five for the next uh, week or two. Yeah, yeah. And it and the volume starts to dry up. Yep. Maybe the next move could be a bit of a run. Because well, Br Br Branson's a winner. Let's face it. What's Virgin trade at? Virgin Airlines. Eh. Let's ha how has that performed since it went public? Well, but that may be more of an airlines. What what's the symbol yeah. there? What's the symbol? Virgin. V I R. V I R. I thought it was a, like a, a like a big oval or something like that. Oh, maybe it's uh, V A G V A G I N A. Jeez. Oh, that's too long for a symbol on the New York Stock Exchange. How Sorry, is it? say that again. V A Veterans Affairs Here on the go. Nasdaq. Here we go. Vanguard. No, that's not it. Oh yeah, V A on the U S. What the? Okay, just a minute. All right, is that it? Vanguard. No. What? V A. We're losing control. Houston, Vanguard, we Vanguard. have a problem. Are you sure that's right? V A. V. Oh, they're looking at it right now. V A on the Nasdaq. Huh. Hmm. It says variance futures. <laughs> Did you? Oh, you're in futures. That's why you got to select stock. Remember? Really? Yeah. Okay. Punching the symbol, and then remember, you got these little drop downs here. You got to make sure that this is on stock and not futures. I got it on stock, and I still don't see VA. No, v, I got Vanguard. Well, maybe it's FTSE. my turn to do a little. T oh, that's what I got too. Vanguard, FTSE, Dev. No, 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 no. That's Virgin, Australia, Virgin. No, I, I can't. Uh, Wait a minute. Virgin Galactic. No, there is no. No, that's the uh, space company. Vir oh, you know what it is? Virgin trades in the LSE. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know what? Let's, uh, we can't go there. Yeah. We can't go there. We're not going there. We don't have time to go there. We are not. don't have time for that nonsense. 
So gold, which hit 1321 on Friday whoa, in the whoa, morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. We weren't finished talking oh, about okay. this Richard Branson. I'm I wanted get, to ask you. I'm getting you, ready. I'm getting ready. Do you ready. know how much it costs to go on a, on a Virgin Galactic space flight? I'm, I'm going to say $3 million. No, $250,000. That's it? That's it. Let's go. Let's get a couple of Let's get Leo a DiCaprio is signed up to go. Yeah. Fraser Toms is signed up to go. Hey, but what about the, is every seat a window seat? That's what I want to know. If it's 250,000 bucks a ticket and you get on that plane and you don't, you got an aisle seat or you, worse yet, you're sitting So you in the go middle? into outer space for what? How long? Well, I don't know. How long does it take you know to what, get they, there? They, they say, they say that if, if they get this figured out, they'll be able to move from Australia to New York in an hour. Yeah, I heard that there was because a... Because once you get into the thing that, that where there's no atmosphere, away well, she goes. I, I actually read that if you skip off of the atmosphere, you can catch a slingshot effect yeah, yeah. off of the rotational gravity, and that gets you around the world in an hour. Well, you, you, that's what they do to get pick up speed when, when what, they send a ship down to Mars. What kind of G's are you getting on that? Jesus. Jeez. It's called Jesus G's. Jesus G's. <laughs> When they serve Jesus juice on every flight. <laughs> and you, you everybody, gotta read. All everybody, including the pilot and the stewardess, is going, Jesus. <laughs> Never mind that. He's flying the plane. <laughs> hey, Seuss, fire up oh. engine number four. Scotty. Scotty. Yeah, okay. Scotty. The, Biscotty. With your coffee. <laughs> with Jesus juice. <laughs> Jesus. Bis Scotty. Biscotti with Jesus juice. Oh, what Boy, kind of... But when you get to Australia, you're going to have the shits. <laughs> well, you know what? Open the hatch. It'll be a holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Back to reality. Okay. What, um... Uh, Oh, you know what we have coming up on the show here today? David Kadeichel is going to be here, as promised, from AltaCorp. AltaCorp is the uh, investment banking arm of the Alberta Treasury branch, which is, uh, yeah, a really cool enterprise. Anyways, he's their cannabis analyst, and he's going to be here. We're going to talk about Hexo, of course. We're going to talk about GW Pharma, and we're going to talk about uh, the weed industry in general. And then, at a little later, we're going to have via Skype Gary Simons from Pure Life Carbon. That sounds interesting. Pure Life Carbon. What could that be? Well, you know what it is? Is it's actually, among other things, it's a growing medium for marijuana. I took delivery of four pails of it, and in my next crop, as soon as this round of ACDC is done, we're going to grow two plants in cocoa coir for the growing medium, and two plants in pure carbon. I know how to spell coir. Well. C O I R. Whoa! Is it pronounced quar? Quar. Quar. But a lot of people say coco quar. Coir. 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 That's a coir there. That's how you learned that from playing uh, crosswords. Anyways, so this, 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 this pure carbon thing is interesting to me because do you know how many tons, tons now, not pounds, tons of rock wool is put into landfills presently by the cannabis industry? You know the cannabis industry has a pretty poor track record and quite an issue when it comes to environmental friendliness. Now, is that prior to going legal or? No. Because there was no industry prior to going legal. It was, it was no, a block. No, there, there was a quite a I, I know, but, it's a, but it, was, it was sort of clandestine. Well, we were S guilty of nothing more or less than single-use plastic baggies and a whole lot of paper. Yeah. Interesting. But we didn't kill anybody with bites. Is, is there a lot of waste? I guess there's quite a bit of waste from an extraction plant it's, to get out, right? What would well, you do with that? Yeah. You use it for uh, hemp, uh, fertilizer. Fertilizer? I don't think that after you've uh, extracted the... <laughs> that's, that's a priceless look, Ed. Oh, no, that's if you could was... package that look, that would be like... <laughs> Close-up of Ed's... Come on, Ed, okay. give us that look. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you, you kind you, of you know what? it in there. The, the, the problem is you got you to get it when I just do I it. I know, I know. What's going on in there? Okay, okay. We, want, we, want, we want my own camera from now on, okay? <laughs> well, you got your own camera. It's back oh. there. Look, there it is. There you are. Wait, why does in camera mean secret, in secret, in well, camera? You, because you're inside the camera where even the camera can't see you. Oh, in the Oh, it's, you mean it's in the camera. Inside the camera. Let's get in the camera. <laughs> Everybody, in, in the, the camera. camera. 
Okay, <sighs> okay. I'm getting, oh, I'm boy. losing my breath. Are you? It's kind of bad, too. Oh. Well, you know, I haven't really caught a stench. Good, 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 good. You know, I've noticed, though, since I did drink two bottles of Barolo last night, that my sense of odor detection is down today. I, I see you haven't given up your uh, a penchant for the higher-end uh, quality wine. I drink... Uh, well, here's the here's what happened. Boone's Farm. You're <laughs> Boone's drinking Farm. Barolo. What? I drink, I'll drink. i drink a bottle of Two Buck Chuck if it's oh, any good. <laughs> two Buck Chuck. 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 You never had two buck chuck? If I think if Pretty you good. said it a little differently, I might have had it. Oh, two buck chuck. How about that? <laughs> Not a little bit differently. A lot anyway, differently. No, you got to move some of the letters around. Never mind. Oh, never mind. Two buck fuck. <laughs> Oh. oh! No, you said it, not Jesus. me. Jesus, okay. it's P rated. Okay, okay, okay. PG, man. Oh. Okay, you know what we haven't done and we might not ever do again if we don't get our shit together here is let's look at the cannabis business from the 50,000 foot level. And I'm not talking via Virgin Atlantic. Boy, somebody's calling me right now, which means some asshole actually is not watching the show. It's my friend from the West Coast, David Eaton, who does not take into consideration the fact that at this time we are live on the air. And you are too now. <laughs> Hi, David. I'm, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you in 30, 40 minutes. Anyways, look at that. I had to take a call. Um, so, yeah, markets are down. Well, let, let, me, let me take a look at. And up. Up, summer up, down. summer down. You know what? You know what's been on a tear is Tesla. Tesla. I mean, it's had two major days. You Thursday, like that's Friday. All the cannabis. We're going to get today. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a, that's all we're going to talk about. Cannabis. Three out of four indexes are down. Fuck it. We're not talking about cannabis okay. today. Hit it. No. <laughs> um, so yes, as I was starting to say. Um, you will see that the three of four indexes are quite a bit lower. Uh, the Midas Letter Venture Index is down 2.51%. Midas Letter Large Cap Index is down 0.56%. Kind of a meh, but still, oh, you know that uptrend is still intact. Uh, small Cap Index is down 1.38%. That downtrend is intact. And the CSE Index is actually up 0.3%. 6% and that has an intact downtrend despite the up day today. So if you wanted to know how to rock and row, you'd have to been around when Ed was can really I, uh, giving her. Can I, can I put up a chart of weed for a minute? Yeah, why don't we start with a chart of weed? Okay. What are you seeing in there? Look, look at the one day chart here and you know, I'll tell you what I, interesting, just to, I picked this up. So you're seeing, uh, Sorry. Sure. This this kind of a thing here, where you where you got a, da a little bit of a descent. It's a pennant, okay? Yes. This thing's going to resolve itself either way, and I would say whatever way it breaks, there's probably a, a tradable move. Really? But I don't know which way it's going to break. But the what way, do you think? Way, eh, probably down. Probably down. Hey, only you don't think that this market has sold off enough yet? I mean, it's not a mining industry for God's yeah. sakes. That's going to just keep going down and down and down and down, I, and down for I, a decade. I, I, look. Look, the problem is so many people are in the bag. When I say in, in the, the bag, bag they're... they're, they're uh, I was in the bag on Saturday night. Yeah. Are you in the bag? Uh, what do you mean in the bag? Like under the weather? Like in the, in the red? I guess in the bag means you've over imbibed. You've landed in it. You're lying in the gutter looking up at the stars. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> well, only because I couldn't move. Anyway, no. so Cure Leaf is up 1.57% okay. to 713. Green Thumb Industries is up 1.29% to 1174. Harvest Health and Recreation, 3.13% up. Now, just wanted to quickly touch on, uh, don't know whether you noticed the press release last week put out by Cresco and Origin House, but uh, the Department of Justice has allowed the waiting period for them to move forward with their merger to expire indicating that they can go ahead with their merger. Now, this is significant because Harvest Health and Recreation has three of those things pending, and if they all expire without comment, that means Harvest Health and Recreation can cons consummate its three transactions that were stopped by this and will become, in that one fell swoop, the largest multi-state operator in the world! In the world! 
Anyway, so wow. and it's been beat up badder than anything, man. It's just lying there like a stuck pig, jet trash. Never mind. You know, when, when, when you get an index, anyway, I'm, I'm going to jump gears, change gears here, and I don't want to do that on you, but... Uh, oh, sure. No, I don't mind. Well, look at the so S&P, all-time high. Yes. Never been higher. S&P. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Well, you know what? I want to get, I want to get up my... Uh, Looks like it's climbing the stairway to heaven. This is, a, this is the, the chart I've been following here for some time. There was the old high. There was a failed test. More failed tests, and then today through. So we're now broken out, and as long as we we don't close below, this thing's probably going higher. So I don't know what, where it's going to end up, but a lot of people feel that it's already inflated. And so the higher it goes, the more inflated it's going to get. And if we get any bad news... <clears throat> It's coming crashing down. You, you, know, you know what? you you got to be so careful. Like, it, it, it looked like so many times this thing was going to cave in, and it, here we are, all-time highs. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. But, but, but to move this thing, you need enormous amounts of money. Enormous amounts of money. Gigantic amounts. Well, the EU's now printing 2.3 trillion euros or some crazy we, we, number. We, you know, they're talking about the, the, you know, Brexit and everything else, but you know what's gone up here? The British pound's up. A, a fair amount since... Uh, well, I would hope so. The British... Brexit got delayed by another three months. You don't... Don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. That means there's going to be an election, which is essentially, for all intents and purposes, a secondary referendum on the question of Brexit itself. A victory handed to Boris Johnson and his lot would be a resounding endorsement of departing, whereas any other outcome will be the opposite. There's a three-month chart of the uh, the pound versus the dollar. And, uh, you know, you can see here in the last month, something's changed. Uh, I don't even, I don't understand all this, uh, all the, what, why, the whys, but there is a bottom, and then we've had this sharp rally, and now we're sort of digesting it a bit, but about, about a seven, five, six, seven percent move, depending on you know, whatever. So those are big currency moves. The U.S. dollar has been getting weaker, hence the move in gold. Ah. Yeah, there's a lot of cross cur currents here. I don't know how it's going to get resolved, but it's going to. It's some people are going to win. A, a few, a few people are going to win, and a lot of people are going to lose. Yeah, that's the way it works. No, um, the Gold Hub, which is the uh, electronic newsletter of the World Gold Council, yes. reported that uh, Chinese gold ETFs in terms of assets under management had reached an all-time high in September, while physical demand remained soft. Now, yeah, that's here's interesting. The thing. That's interesting. That's, here's that's my a... question. Is not an ETF obliged to buy the asset, buy the metal? I th well, I think that's what they're saying. Well, I think they're saying it, that it does not mean that. Well, because how can the ETF have all-time assets under management and yet the price of gold go lower? Well, the price of gold is is uh, a you, you, know, you, know, you know what? I, the, these these black and white questions. I just don't w work in the financial world. So if that's a black and white question. There's no answer. If you want to know some some possible reasons, like yeah, gold <laughs> gold's at fifteen hundred US. Right? Yeah. Call it whatever you want. 1500 US is a big number relative to where it's been. No kidding. In the last couple of years. Okay, well, I'm putting up the chart here of uh, gold physical price and assets under management or daily trading volume. Um, yeah, the, the, the ET yeah, the money has to go into the, these ETFs if bullion starts to move, for sure. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to me that the. Uh, oh, Jesus, what the hell happened there? Wow. I really hate computers, you know? Uh, you hate them or don't like them? I don't like them. So, yeah, there you have it. <coughs> you know, we saw gold move up dramatically last week, and it's almost given it all back that fast. You know, just because maybe rates have been ticking up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, I find that the gold, I find that the uh, trading in the gold price and therefore the gold price reporting must be 
approximately 90% fraudulent if you look at the, sure. that fact, that ETFs but, you know. have more assets under management and the price of gold and demand for gold physically softens, which is a clear indication that obviously the ETF is not buying gold, which means that the gold price is fictional. But that's the purest indication I can, I can indicate. And it's not an absolute, it's relative. So let's just quickly look at the 10-year Treasury note, okay? Okay. Just to give you an idea of what's going on here, because this this is the indicator of all indicators. Anyway, I don't know if we can open this up. Yes, we can. There we go. So look, look, this thing is flirting with all-time low yields, and all of a sudden, miraculously, we got a problem in the overnight uh, with with uh, you repos. know repos, repos, right? So this that's when that that was a month ago. Okay, this is six months apparently. So and it was the repo crisis that spiked, caused the rates to spike. I, I believe exactly. They had to step in and start throwing in liquidity, and yet, you know that that would that would sort of knock down rate. And yet, wh wh why is this rate back here? And again, well, why is it going up again then? Is look, it because look, the this tenure is, rate is they're trying to prop it up? Maybe they fabricated the entire repo process just to allow them. See that, you low? This low is higher. So yields didn't get as low, and now we're back almost knocking on this door. That's sort of like the big W. Did you ever see the mad, mad, mad world? The big W? No. Is, are these palm trees that were in the shape of a W? Never seen it. The big W. Never seen it. Anyway. Is that like the opposite of McDonald's? The yeah, big M? Yeah. Anyways, so uh, David Kadeichel was here from Alberta Treasury Board's uh, Investment Banking Division. <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling it that. Alta Corp. David Kadeichel. I'm joined now by David Kadeichel. He is Managing Director and Research Analyst at Alta Corp, covering healthcare and life sciences. David, welcome back. Thanks for having me, James. Uh, David, the uh, bear market in cannabis, how has that affected your outlook on the space? Yeah, so I think you'll see a lot of analysts, we've taken a, a more bearish approach on the markets given the, the downturn we've seen over the last uh, several months. And there's, and there's likely good explanations for uh, this a big uh, part of the bear market. In fact, we just put out uh, some research a couple of weeks ago uh, for the legalization uh, 2.0 derivatives. Uh, a big part contributing uh, to the bear market now, as you've seen in the U.S., a lot of uh, vape pen uh, illnesses uh, reported, which we feel is anecdotal. If you look at uh, some of the reports published, even by the FDA, uh, a key component to the uh, vape pen illnesses uh, in the U.S. specifically uh, relates to uh, the pens coming from uh, illegal uh, sources or the, the so-called illicit sources. Mm -hmm. uh, and a substance in there is found, uh, it's called vitamin E acetate. We actually feel, uh, turning to a bull perspective a little bit, that the Canadian LPs uh, that, that play by the rules, um, those are the ones that are going to be the winners um, in the medium to long term. So all this to say, James, um, in a long-winded way, yes, absolutely, we're in a bear market right now, uh, but we continue to have a very positive outlook uh, on the space uh, for the medium to long term. Okay, great. One of the uh, areas, and I'm going to mention one of the names that I know you cover, uh, who's sort of the sector that's really been forgotten in the bear market is the biosynthetic cannabis uh, companies. And GW Pharma, who is at this sort of the top of the pharma food chain in cannabis pharmaceutical, is, is also exploring biopharma sources for its stuff. So what can you tell us about the biopharma industry at this point? Yeah, no, it's a great question, James. And unfortunately, GW has been taking some of the hits with some mm. of the other cannabis companies mm. over the last uh, few months. I think uh, we've talked about before, so we're the only firm in Canada to actually cover GW Pharma. In fact, I'll be at their head office in a, in a couple of weeks. But we continue to be big bulls um, on this name in particular. And in fact, they're our top pick uh, within the whole cannabinoid-derived pharmaceutical sector. You look just in their previous two quarters, uh, they've beat all uh, analyst expectations to the point, I believe, where most, if not all analysts, um, have, have increased uh, target price. Mm -hmm. When you look at a company like GW, who is um, the world leader in cannabinoid-derived pharmaceuticals, their fundamental prospects have not changed at all over the past several months. In fact, they're only getting better. You look at Epidiolex, approved in the U.S., the first and only approved uh, plant-based uh, cannabinoid drug, uh, Epidiolex, 98% CBD. Uh, to ever be approved in the U.S. Recently got approval in the EMA, mm -hmm. uh, and they'll be exploring the U.K., Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, and France. 
Um, we just continue to be very big bulls on this name. And that said, James, uh, with, with GW itself, the beauty of them too, they're not a one-trick pony. They have Epidiolex, which we've pegged uh, to be a blockbuster drug, uh, but they also have a, a, a very substantial pipeline uh, of drugs. They're looking, for example, at a, a rare cannabinoid, CBDV, for different types of epilepsies, autism, Rett syndrome. Hmm. Sativex is another interesting drug, uh, currently approved uh, in the EU or parts of the EU, and it's a 50-50 split uh, between THC and CBD. So certainly GW is the name uh, for, for my research franchise when it comes to cannabinoid-derived pharmaceuticals. And then going back to your other question, uh, more around biosynthetics, uh, we recently put out a thought, a whole thought paper on biosynthetics. Oh. Uh, we also launched uh, coverage on Willow Biosciences mm -hmm. not too long ago. I saw that. Yeah, I, I think you're on my distribution yes, list. Yes, yes. <laughs> I try to read it all. <laughs> try, yeah, or at least the first page. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. But within biosynthetics, we're big bulls on this space in particular yeah. for several reasons. But you look, you, look at, you look at a company like a Willow Biosciences, uh, which has also been um, under pressure. Um, the first cannabinoid that they're looking to commercialize, CBD. Okay, so this is just one uh, cannabinoid. We feel uh, in all of our due diligence, not just Willow, but the industry as a whole, will likely get to biosynthetic uh, at commercial scale, maybe between two and three years approximately. But what the, the real benefit to uh, biosynthetics in particular is not only the cost uh, and the purity, but the minor cannabinoids, or the so-called rare cannabinoids. So when you, you look at flower prices, even we've seen uh, Health Canada come up with pricing, prices of flour being commoditized, heavy mm -hmm. th mostly THC um, in, in dried bud. But when you're talking about, even CBD, we've seen reports where prices um, are coming down. When you're talking about minor cannabinoids that companies won't really extract them from the plant, especially the very rare cannabinoids, it's just too cost prohibitive. Uh, this is where companies like Willow, uh, who are only one of uh, three uh, publicly traded companies um, that are in the biosynthetic space, we believe uh, they will do very well. Now, the thing I want to point out to investors on, on the biosynthetic space, this isn't a space, and we've, I think we've spoken about it before, this isn't a space where I think that folks should be uh, looking uh, to, with the idea of making a quick buck. Mm -hmm. The technology is still a number of years away, and this is more of a medium uh, to long-term play. So those that, that are looking to buy uh, not just Willow, but any biosynthetic stock, I think the eyes should be more focused towards a medium to longer-term hold, as opposed to day-to-day, -to -day or the, the volatility uh, we see in a lot of stocks. Um, what we've penned for biosynthetics, and Willow in particular, there's certain milestones that any company has to achieve. Mm -hmm. The first being what we've called competitive cannabinoid production. Without getting into the, the technical numbers about it, what this means is one gram per liter in concentration uh, that any company will have to produce. Competitive cannabinoid production really means the cost of, say, CBD mm -hmm. is almost equivalent to a plant-based uh, mm. CBD product. The next phase, which really gets us excited, it's called, uh, which again, we've coined uh, these terms, is the next generation of cannabinoid production. And this is uh, what we expect to see in uh, approximately the two-year mark at five grams per liter. What that means is that the cost of CBD, in particular, uh, producing uh, through biosynthetic mechanisms is going to be at least 80% uh, cost reduction compared to plant-based extraction. Hmm, that's quite exciting. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's shift now to some of the, I know that you also cover Hexo, and Hexo has been uh, really, you know, getting a lot of criticism for a lot of the different moves it's making. Yep. Um, has the moves that Hexo has been making changed your outlook for the company at all? Well, certainly they have. I think they've changed uh, most analysts' uh, outlook. In fact, um, when they announced, I believe it was last week or the week before, they, they um, uh, slashed guidance altogether. Initially, they guided uh, uh, $400 million in fiscal 2020. We're now one of the lowest firms on the street when it comes to revenue. So we've slashed uh, our numbers as well. Just uh, yesterday, obviously, I think you, you probably saw um, their right-sizing or downsizing their workforce uh, uh, by uh, 200 uh, individuals. Certainly, I think um, most down, I, I still have maintained an outperform rating while reducing my target price. Mm. That said, I think it's incumbent, they report uh, this upcoming Monday. And I've seen a lot of analysts uh, completely downgrade uh, the stock of Hexo. 
Um, I've decided to take a much more prudent approach when uh, they actually do report uh, their earnings and going through their financial statements, the MD&A, et cetera, and further hearing their side of the story on the conference call, um, I think this is going to give us a lot of insight as to uh, how we position Hexo next. But certainly the stock has been uh, under pressure and the, the guidance they've issued over the last couple of weeks has not been positive for the sector. You bet. So the closing of the what was the New Strike facility in Beamsville, Ontario, uh, that was a $260 million acquisition. Is that going to appear as a write-off in the next uh, quarter? Your guess is as good as mine at right. this point. We'll, we'll find out on Monday, and, and if not Monday, uh, sure. then Tuesday. Okay. But certainly more to, more to follow on that story in particular. Right. So do you think that the, uh, the, the rolling out of the, of the inexpensive brand of marijuana original stash, I mean, all the reports are that it's a good quality marijuana. It's being well received by the, the recreational users. Do you think that that price if, is, is going to be something that, you know, sort of carves out market share? and puts them in a leadership position in terms of sales or is it more likely going to cause them increased pressure on creating profit because i think a lot of people are going to switch to that and not bother with the more expensive ones great question james uh, so we were very encouraged to see hexo uh, so-called so compete with the illicit market product we think that is going to be something uh, that does uh, uh, well for hexo we also feel though that they're not the first that's going to come out with this we've already called we've talked about it before with with price commoditization with mm -hmm. dried flour um, this is just uh, the start to that we think so well, there's going to be a number of lps that have to compete now with hexo's uh, original stash um, just just to show a, a brand face so to speak in the actual dispensary. So while we think this is a good move for Hexo, um, I wouldn't you know, speak to the moon about it uh, by any sense because our view on the whole sector is really more, more about the innovation component, CPG, pharmaceuticals. So when I see any company starting to slash prices or even create brands for that low end um, uh, bud or, or product, I think it's a positive, but I don't think it's a game changer uh, for any uh, particular company. Sure. All right, David, that's a great update. I really appreciate your time and thanks very much for joining me. Thanks, James. If you're enjoying the show, subscribe to Midas Letter on YouTube so you stay up to date on everything investment. The blue with the green. Yeah. Oh. Hey. hey! Whoa! Hey, hey, We're hey, back. hey, Blue and green. So David Kadeichel is, uh, like, interesting, his comments about Hexo, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Did you think? <laughs> Oh, you didn't you have got your. Me. You didn't you have got your, your dirty. I saw rat. your ear dirty piece rat. in. I thought you were listening. How can I be we listening? You were listening to you. Over <laughs> <the speak. laughs> I, I like David. I've, I've chat with David. I interviewed him one day uh, while you were yeah. one of your, your world gallivanting, gallivanting around the world. Um, How would you like to go to Los Angeles this week? This week? Yeah. What day? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow? Yeah. What do you think? Anyways, um, do you remember uh, Mrs. Robinson, the song? And here's to you, Mrs. Mrs. Robinson. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, poltergeist, what? Um, so... Gary Simons from Pure Life Carbon was here. And this is very interesting because this is, can solve a lot of the waste problems associated with the cannabis space. Check this out. <music> Gary Simons joined me now. He's the VP of Strategy of Pure Life Carbon, Inc. Gary, welcome. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Gary, a quick overview. Tell me, what is Pure Life Carbon all about? Well, literally about carbon, as the name would indicate, we essentially produce a form of biochar, an advanced form of biochar. And to explain what biochar is, it's essentially a soil amendment that has been used for thousands of years. It was used by the Incans and the Mayans way back in ancient times. And it fell out of favor as petrochemical uh, you know, nutrients and that kind of thing came to the fore. So what we've done essentially is we have created a biochar that isn't just a soil amendment, it can be used in soil as growing. So, for example, if you're growing a cannabis crop in Canada, which is becoming increasingly popular, obviously, uh, then you could substitute something like rock wool or peat moss or what's called cocoa choir uh, with our biochar, 
And there's a number of advantages to that. You tend to get higher yields, you get less crop loss. Uh, it also stores carbon, so when you're done with it, you can actually use it as a soil amendment, put it into the soil, and it will not only use, uh, you know, improve that soil, but it will also store carbon dioxide, which you know improves the global warming situation. And in fact, uh, the UN panel on climate change has said that biochar is the only technology currently available that can viably reduce the impact of global warming. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I'm obviously going to try this out as soon as I can because I'm growing uh, my regulation permitted four plants and I'm growing it in coco coir. And uh, so that's, that's going to be an interesting uh, experiment. Now, there are reasons that um, big, big sort of cannabis companies should be looking at this. And foremost amongst them is the uh, environmental cost of using uh, things like uh, particularly rock wool. And maybe you could outline how the cost of using rock wool compares with the cost of using uh, your product compares over the longer term. Sure. So, for example, we've been working with a uh, facility in Alberta. They've put our product uh, into their facility and side by side with Rockwall. Now, the Rockwall costs them somewhere around, you know, nine or ten dollars per plant. Uh, ours costs about twelve dollars per plant all in. The biggest difference, though, is in the ease of use. Ours is easier to use in general. Uh, the fact that um, with rock wool, really in Canada, you dispose of it. You know, it's going to go to the landfill and it's going to take up a lot of space. It's not going to degrade. And so it becomes a bit of an environmental hassle right now. Um, ours on the ends, you can send it back to us. We will process it and it can be reused completely, not just recycled, but reused. So that takes care of one problem. The other thing, too, is, of course, the sequestering of carbon which is a, a net positive and uh, will probably help you down the road with your carbon tax credits, which really cannabis companies aren't getting right now. Uh, but the big thing is that just in terms of yield, we're seeing really impressive gains with yield. Uh, so for example, in that one facility, we saw roughly about 13% on average yield increase per plant for flower, which of course is the important part. Um, in addition, the plants were ready for harvest sooner, and, and according to the grower, about two to three weeks sooner uh, than you know with a with a standard rock wool blend. And so, what that means in terms of increased yield, when we calculated it out, was about 23% increase in yield just for that. And we calculated roughly about a 47% increase in yield for that particular facility, and that that obviously means increased revenue, increased profit and a much lower cost of production. So those are pretty solid reasons to make a switch. Yeah, especially when I think that the, uh, the cost per unit to establish a plant does not generally include the cost of disposal of things that are ultimately toxic like rock wool. So that to me makes it very attractive. Now, um, are there any downsides to this stuff relative to the incumbent favorites, rock wool, lava, coco coir? Not really. I mean, cocoa, interestingly enough, the same people that were behind cocoa in the beginning are the same people that helped develop this technology. And, you know, cocoa has some advantages, uh, for sure. It's very lightweight. It's, uh, it, it doesn't have as serious a, an impact on the environment, but it's not a sterile medium. And that's the big difference between cocoa and then rock wool and biochar. You know, biochar and rock wool are both sterile mediums, and that's why people have been switching to them. But again, with rock wool, you do have these disposal issues. And in Europe, it's pretty highly regulated. You know, they're a much more crowded environment in Europe. Um, they also have a lot more greenhouse growing. For example, the Netherlands, it has so much greenhouse growing that that small country is the second largest exporter of food in the world by dollar value. So they have a lot of rock wool to, to dispose of. And uh, they basically have to recycle it, find some way to reuse it. And often they will just ship it out. It has to be made into things like something similar to a concrete block or into insulation, things like that, all of which is adding to the cost of using rock wool. Uh, ours, on the other hand, is just completely reusable. 
and that that really is one of the major differences sure okay can you tell me as much as you can without giving away any company secrets as to how is this how is this carbon black made or this this charred carbon how do you make it what are the inputs what are the what are the environmental impacts of producing that itself I am going to be, unfortunately, quite cagey. I, I hate to say that, but I am going to be a bit cagey. But essentially, in very general terms, we take biomass of a type that we don't even talk about. We then use a process called pyrolysis, which is essentially we heat it in an, an anaerobic or, in other words, an environment without oxygen. So we heat it, and then it turns into something that looks a lot like charcoal. Uh, now, there's biochar and there's biochar. Ours is made... So that it's very hard and it does not degrade. And to think of it, think of plastic, for example. You know, there's lots of kinds of plastic. On the one hand, you could have a space age plastic that is very hard that you could use to make the exterior of, a, say, an automobile. And then you have, for example, styrofoam, two very different plastics. Same thing with, bio, with biochar. Some biochars are very soft. Uh, they degrade very quickly. Think of, say, charcoal in a campfire fire. You know, you pour water on it, it just turns into mush. Uh, this particular biochar is so hard that it can endure for over a thousand years. And it can be reused over that period. It can be re-sterilized uh, and then, you know, recharged with nutrients or probiotics, depending on the use, and then put back into action either in the soil or even in a soilless medium growing situation again. Um, now, what we do after the initial biochar is made, we run it through a purification process essentially taking out any possible heavy metals or anything like that. And then finally, we charge it with various things. So if certain nutrients are required within the, uh, say, a greenhouse growing environment, we add that to the biochar. Uh, biochar is interesting, too. Think of it as a sort of a hard sponge. It has a, has a you know, a, 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 to give you an idea, a square meter of our material has 10,000 acres of surface area so it can hold a great deal of water and a great deal of nutrients in a very small amount mm -hmm. okay and finally uh how can investors participate in this company should they uh determine that this is an appropriate investment for themselves <laughs> this is a very early stage invest investment it's a private company this is a private placement uh we're currently working with a group it's actually a group of farmers that have uh, their own uh, fund. So it's a, a large group of farmers that have their own fund. And they're, they've committed uh, essentially about a $1.5 million. Uh, we're filling out the rest of the million dollars in a $2.5 million round. And essentially, they any investor who would have to be accredited, by the way, or an institutional investor or somebody of that nature, because it is a private placement, uh, could just contact me personally. And uh, I'm kind of guiding that charge. Okay, great. Gary, that's a great introduction to the company and the product. I will look forward to using it. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you again soon before you go public. Thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa. Wake up, wake up! Wakey, What's wakey, with you? wakey, wakey. Hands off, snakey. That's, that's, if you got boys, right, that's what you say. <coughs> wakey, wakey, hands off, snakey. Right, what do you say if you got girls? Careful. <laughs> <laughs> wakey, hands off, snakey. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. Whoa. 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 Older, older girls. Hashtag older them girls. too. Yeah. You, you, you know what? You know, I find the whole hashtag me too thing interesting, and I'm not trying to undermine the seriousness right. Of, right. of the uh, abuse against women and decency generally, but uh, are there no instances, like not a single one, of a man being, <laughs> you know, sexually assaulted by a woman? Yeah, well, there was... Are there any? Apparently, there, there's a, there was a, uh, a complaint uh, lodged against a guy. There's a, a, a guy went to a, a place of Ill, Ill repute, apparently, and one of the ladies was a, a, a transgender. I, I don't even know the terminology. And apparently, she was available for him, but he said, no, I, I don't, I don't want to have sex with a... Transgendered. 
I don't even know how to talk, say it properly. I'm not trying to, I'm just saying. Person. Transgender She complained. Person. She, she, they complained, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and now the police are looking into it. What, because? Because he, the, the, the individual John, said, oh, we'll call him a John. The John said, no, I'm not interested. Because they're transgendered. <clears throat> Would you stop at that? You, you know what, I wouldn't be in that situation in the first place. <laughs> That seems to me like a duck. No, 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 no duck. duck. No, I'm not interested. No, no. You're not interested. How many glasses of wine? Well, give me some. Yeah, start pouring the wine into my. See, that's an interesting question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about that for till tomorrow's show, and we'll, we'll pick it up there. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so another news that we didn't get to talk about today was the fact that Amazon is going to start experimenting with uh, delivery of uh, on-call delivery. This, this vehicle here, That's, is that, who or sorry, it's that Walgreens. Thing? Walgreens is going to start experimenting with an on-demand mobile store where you can order something and this thing full of products is flying over your head and a little drone comes down and drops it off. What? Yeah! A store in the air. This is, Jeff Bezos had this uh, Actually, can we pull up that picture of Jeff Bezos on uh, CNBC today, if you can find it, please? He's looking a little bit like Dr. Evil. Do you, a little bit. He looks positively sinister, and it's quite hilarious, because all you need to do is get him going like this, and it's like it's complete. You complete me. You me. complete me. I thought that was so funny. Yeah. So uh, what else did we, we didn't get around to talking a lot about, I wanted to mention that the bullet ID uh, is a, if you want to go, you can Google it on, or rather look it up on YouTube, search it on our YouTube channel. The bullet ID is going to be uh, doing a final private round before seeking a public listing early next year. And the company is planning to come to market with revenue and... Uh, could, this could be barely big, couldn't it? Well, here's the thing. It's like there's legislation in the state of Illinois pending in, that, in the state House of Representatives saying that by 2020, we must sell only serialized ammunition to the private sector. And the same is in California. So the reason that's hoiled them up is there's nothing, there is no system like that. And then the Army put out a statement saying we must find a single ammunition management source. So there's all these things coming together. But, but wouldn't you think really big money in the uh, munitions industry? Like, I mean, every, nobody's gonna just let some small company come in and control it, right? Well, obviously, I think the, out, the I'm, and this I, is the great thing for, that I'm looking forward to. Full disclosure, I'm an investor. I'm a yeah, I know, I know you're, I'm, I'm not trying to give you a rough time here. I'm just trying to say, if you got something, it looks like you got a, a, a black box, people are going to try to stop you. I mean, there, there are people almost trying to stop you from succeeding because they want their black box. Oh, well, there is no other black box that we've been able to find. And uh, the only, the only anti-device, anti-sort of process is the NRA. The National Rifle Association views this as an extension of gun control reform, which it uniformly opposes. Right. Now, since the mass shootings just keep piling up in America, right. the sympathy for the NRA is deteriorating rapidly, and even the NRA needs a win in this situation. So, okay. it's interesting, and uh, we'll be covering that more in the days ahead. But uh, yeah, some real developments with the bullet ID, which I'm sure a lot of you who have uh, participated or happy, happy. I'm happy. Hold so, so what, what could this, what could this, what kind of market cap could this company garner if, if? Uh, now, Edward, that'll be a forward-looking statement, and I ain't dumb enough to make none of those on the stock I own on our show because. And, and you're the sitting, OSC, you're sitting in the in the back seat looking backwards. And the OSC would send us to the pokey for that. You don't want to go to the pokey, do you? Then you the, won't have any choice about having when sex you go with to the, a transgendered you, person because <laughs> they're going to have sex with you whether you want to or not. Then it'll be a different not. kind of pokey. <laughs> it'll be pokey, all right. Pokey, hokey, pokey. Pokey, pokey. You're going to need a whoopee cushion after that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, boy, thank God it's 4 o'clock, eh? This is over. Thank God it's over. See you all tomorrow.